All right, here we go. I'm big. All of a sudden, I am big. I'm just going to ramble about Smite 2 and things that I think they need to fix or not fix. They can't fix something that hasn't been released yet. But the issues from Smite 1 and the mistakes that they say that they've learned from and some hopes, right? I don't want to say some... I don't want to see it in a bad way. This is what I'm hoping for Smite 2. So the first thing I'm hoping for Smite 2, this is kind of a hot take, is that it launches, right, with two game modes, only two game modes, Conquest and Arena, because they're 5v5 games, and I think it needs to be pushed as a 5v5 game, and it needs to launch semi-globally. And pre-alpha, I'm talking about that, that pre-alpha, I know it seems like I'm kind of asking a lot for a pre-alpha to launch semi-globally, but there is a competition game called Predecessor, which is a Paragon remake by a tiny little company that has to be hemorrhaging money. And they have launched with EU, NA East, NA West, and Southeast Asia, right? And that allows pretty much the entire world to play outside of Africa and Latin America. Like Africa will have to play EU or SEA, depending where. India can play SEA. Latin America will probably have to eat ping to either of the American servers, but it allows most people to have under 150 ping, which can be globally okay. So, two game modes for Smite 2 would be nice, and five, hopefully, five servers. And a lot of people will be super sad that I'm saying that, especially like my fellow Australians would be like, there's no fucking way that we're playing on Southeast Asian servers. Why can't we have Australian servers? Because that's happening with that competition, with Predecessor. They're saying most of this is, most of the community that plays on Southeast Asia are from Australia. What's going on here? That needs to not be an issue, hopefully. And with Smite 2, hopefully they dominate the Eastern market. I need China back. I need Southeast Asia back. Japan can hop on and Korea. We need to get the Eastern market involved in Smite 2. I'm saying we like I'm involved. And the way that that works, the way that there's a chance of that, it's giving them something to play on that's not eight months behind in patches and everything. And it's like Smite 2 can't die in America. And we have that proof kind of there that in Smite 1, it was NA and EU only. There's maybe 50 Australians that play the game. Like the rest of the world is dead. Okay, it's under 100 people in the rest of the world that are playing around in different, let's just say different countries. Each country maybe has 100 people outside of America and Europe. Their continents, I know. So we need to get some people back, right? Some people that we're not used to seeing. Not just America, not just Europe. <clears throat> Next thing, that I'm a competitor, right? And Final Guy had a video where he wants Smite 2 to be a competitive game. And there is some hope in this where I'm going to make myself kind of smaller now. I'm going to let Hindu man say some things. Update you non-stop as more information about Smite I'll 2 come down comes here. out. So follow at Smite Game. Okay, brother. Not you, Smite. Hindu. I mean, Where is he? Game. There he is. Right. We are committed to Smite 2 for years to come. This and is as a competitive game, that commitment starts with esports. As a competitive game. Choice of words are, as a competitive game, that choice starts with esports. That's good. Dota is a very competitive game. If I load up Dota... I click play, it doesn't ask if I want to play Joust or Arena, it just says, this is fucking Dota, good luck. Like, good luck. How many gods are there? 7,000. How many abilities are there? Some of them have 20 abilities. You have to control multiple units, and if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're going to lose a lot. That's just the basis of a competitive thing, right? It's also like, what is hard and what is easy? Smite's considered an easy game, but that's not true at all. We just have that perce like perce perception sorry, that Smite is easy due to us playing for 11 years and watching it slowly get cut down so casuals can understand it. Smite 2 is a fresh start where the casual player base gets to relearn a game from 10 gods and it can scale up in skill, not scale down in skill. And that is what I'm praying for, right? I want Smite 2... Not to be catered to party players, because Smite 1's still alive. If you want to go play Joust with your buddies, fuck off, go play Joust on Smite 1, you know what I mean? Like, we can have Smite 2 be a good competitive experience, and that's what MOBAs are. I could rate about rate, I could keep ranting on about that with, like, League comparisons, with even Wild Rift comparisons. I've played so many MOBAs. The only MOBA I haven't played is Heroes of North. 
and that includes like Arena of Valor, Mobile Legends, Bang Bang. I've played Honor of Kings. I've played the Switch port of Arena of Valor. I've played the Cartoon Network fucking like the Cartoon Network MOBA. I've played every MOBA. I swear to God, and it needs to be competitive. It cannot be a casual game. Smite One servers are staying up for a reason. Okay, that could be a good reason. If you want to play a certain whatever, go play it in Smite One. And yes, that will split the player base. And before we keep going about, I'm going to talk about that. Splitting the player base. Another good reason in my mind why Smite 2 should only launch with Conquer Arena is because that won't split the player base as much. And we don't want to split the player base because Smite 1 still exists in the same timeline as Smite 2. So if Smite 1 has 50 modes, or, you know, it doesn't have 50 modes, but let's count it like Conquest, Joust, Arena, Assault, Slash, and then if you keep going, there's like Match of the Day, there's Ranked Conk, there's Ranked Joust, there's Ranked Duel, right? So there's nine modes, maybe? I might, might even be forgetting one. That's live, and in the past, there's been uh, Siege and Clash. So like 10 or 11 modes that have been in Smite, maybe even more. And that's kind of crazy that we split the player base that much within one game. So if Smite 2 launches with five modes, we're also counting the cues from Smite 1, and there's like 16 different game modes of Smite Universe split across how many servers? Who knows? So I do want Smite 2 to focus on a small game mode, even if it just launches with Conk, to be honest. Like, just nail one thing. What do you want Smite 2 to be? And nail it. And hopefully it's a competitive game. But listen. 2024 will be a transition year for the esports scene as the Titan Forge esports ecosystem moves from Smite to Smite 2 and evolves to answer a few of the community's most frequently Actually, heard concerns. Come up here. More lands where you can join together in the audience and cheer on your favorite teams. More lands, always good. Community is good. And I think what SWC does specifically is it, br it bridges that competitive to casual gap because casual players can still be involved in esports if you don't want to sweat while playing, you can be a fan. And being a fan is fun. Being a fan is very fun. I love watching esports because I'm a competitor, but if I didn't want to compete, I'd still be watching it. You know what I mean? I'd still be a casual with a favorite team. In Australia, we all love AFL, like football. In America, you love sports, baseball, NFL. And if, like in Europe, I'm sure, there's cricket, there's soccer, all the amount of football games in Europe that have mad fans that all fucking suck. You're never going to play for Manchester or an Arsenal, but you're still a crazy good fan, right? <laughs> And it comes from culture and community and more lands grows more culture and grows more community, okay? More events in general will grow more interaction between the two parties of the pro players and the entertainers versus the fans. And Smite 1 was on a good trajectory until COVID and it ruined it. It fucked it, right? So more lands is really good. And I'm hoping that it's a global land, right? Because we, I'm hoping that there's more servers and I'm hoping that Australia gets a land or China gets a land, Korea, Japan, doesn't matter, just don't fucking do Atlanta for the 20th time in a row. The amount of lands that I went, which was, that was just going to high res and going to the foyer, you grab a drink from the fridge, you go play in the same booth every fucking time. It's like, it lost magic for me, especially. First time I went over as an Australian coach, I was like, this is cool. Then I was like, it's kind of just an office building. And then every time I went over for the Valks, I was like, it's just the fucking office. It's like going to work. Lands eliminate all that. Lands you show up, the first land I went to for Smite was, was it Adelaide? It doesn't matter, it was like some weird thing. There was only like a hundred people there, but it was sick. It's an environment that no one's used to, so it's like, it feels like an even playing ground. Anyway, I'll keep rambling if I keep going. A return of region-based rivalries. A return with region-based rivalries. I see that as NAEU, and I think Smite sees that as NA and EU as well. Obviously, I do hope for global, and we'll get to global Play next. So, we'll skip that. No more requirements for pros to live in Atlanta allowing anyone to compete regardless of where they are from. Okay, listen very carefully. I put the cards down. Listen very carefully to what Hindu man says here, because I think it is important the way that he words it. Turn of region-based rivalries with their unique matters. Yeah. No more requirements for pros to live in Atlanta, allowing anyone to compete regardless of where they are from. No more requirement for pros to live in Atlanta, allowing anyone to compete regardless from where they're from. So, 
the initial sight of this will make anyone that's a competitor or an ex-competitor. I've, I've seen people like there's a Reddit post from an old OCE pro like Japan, China, anywhere. Let, Latam, Latam North, Latam South, Brazil. Anyone that's not based in America sees this and they like, I'm sure that there's something that makes them so happy. But for me, I am so riddled with doubt because I've heard this before. In 2018, Atletico went over to LAN and we asked the commissioner, the esports commissioner at the time, if global pro scene is still a thing in 2019. So the fo hey, we show up, we compete in 2018. Hey, in the following year, is there still like a global pro scene? Looks us dead in the eye, deadpans, yes, there is still a global chance to compete. Okay, cool. We go back to Australia where we're talking about the team because we had to play with a sub. We're like, why don't we just keep the sub for next year, see where things go. And then in January, when they do the keynote, they announce that the Smite Global Pro scene is dead, but everyone's able to compete in the minor league or the open circuit SCC, SOC, right? So anyone can actually compete in there. The way that that works is not applicable. The global pro scene returns has to mean that anyone that lives in a time zone that is not in America will have an admin from that time zone, will have a tournament run in their time zone, and will have it on their server. Otherwise, that is the biggest fucking facade I have ever seen. Because once again, that has happened to us. We're told that we're able to compete. And then, and then when we're like, where's the, where's the competition? They said, it is at 3 a.m. on a Saturday on 330 ping. We'll see you there and you get to play for 14 hours. Fuck that. Literally fuck that. No one will play the game. This has to be people playing on their own server against their own competition, against rivalries that you grow yourself through games that you play on your own server. The amount of rivalries that we have in Australia is actually through the roof. It's good competition. It's good banter. Like... I want nothing more than to verse, like, the Chinese guys again. Avant-garde versus Kwaju Reapers. They Avant-garde lost. There's no fucking way Australia loses to China. That's insane. Let the shitty regions, quote-unquote, let the, like, disadvantaged regions verse each other for a spot for Worlds. You know what I mean? Like, let it truly be a global competition. An esports scene that is more open to anyone with the skill to win. Open to anyone with the skill to win. More freedom for players to sign sponsorship deals with whomever they want to. Introducing the Smite 2 Founders Series, a series of land majors that will rebuild the foundation of Smite 2 esports scene. Start enjoying Smite 2's Founders Series, I hope is global. Once again, it's pre-alpha competition. It's probably not going to be global. But building the esports scene from like the ground up, we used to have lands at PAX every year which is like a you know PAX is everywhere um once again the SPL players went to China to play a land like there were global lands and it was big like Smite used to actually have a, a global name a global brand and with these lands I'm praying that they build their global brand again Alpha teams will be able to form freely under a banner of their choice and play in online qualifiers the best teams will earn their spots to play live at a Smite 2 LAN Major. These Majors will be held in front of a live audience around the- So online qualifiers for Majors, he said. So that's where I get that kind of PTSD of play on the American servers to qualify for the American Major, play on the EU servers to qualify for the EU Major. That's worrying for me. The world. We can confirm today that in year one of Smite 2 Esports, there will be at least one major in the United States, and for the first time since 2017, competitive Smite will be played in front of a crowd at a major in Europe or the UK. Be sure to follow the Smite Pro X account to learn more about- All right, that, that's, that's Hindu speech over, okay? It doesn't really matter. I'll put him back up to the big screen. Um, and then a couple more things that I wanted to touch on. The whole skin debacle of Smite 2 is completely, completely, completely ridiculous. In one month, Tekken 8, oh no, this week I think Tekken 8 comes out. I have spent $100 on Tekken 7. I skipped Tekken 6, but I paid probably 80 bucks for Tekken 8, so I've spent $180 on Tekken. I definitely had, wait, Tekken 8 comes out, I've spent 100 on Tekken 7. No, Tekken 5 I paid 80, so that's 180 bucks. Tekken 4 was probably 50 bucks, right? So that's what, $230, 
Tekken 3 back in the day was probably 20 bucks. So let's just say, let's just say I've spent 250 bucks on Tekken. Tekken 8's about to come out. Why don't I get Tekken 8 for free? Because it's a transaction, right? When you buy skins, it's a micro transaction and it's over. My account would be, I've had offers from PlayStation players when I back, when I played on the PlayStation, because I've got Archon, Thanatos, and Poolside in. I'll give you $1,500 for it. I'm saying no, because I think it's worth way more than that. And my name's Sharks. I like the, I like the tag Sharks more than I like any skin that I have on my account. But the bottom line is my account is worth thousands of dollars. Thousands. But it's all fake. That money doesn't exist. It's only rare because I bought it like 10 years ago. And now you don't have a chance to buy it anymore. But it's all fake. It's a pixel on a screen. Right? When you log on to a computer at high res, you have everything unlocked. Everything. Every skin's there. Every border's there. Every rank. If you click on the top right icon of your thing, it's all pixels. It doesn't matter. Like, it really doesn't matter. I just don't understand if people are spending $800 on skins and then Smite shuts down, are they going to ask for a refund? Are they going to, like... I don't get the argument. The option is there to play Smite 1 and keep using your little skins, but, like, play Smite 2. Like, we're here to play a MOBA at the end of the day, and I think Smite 1 was slowly just turning into... I don't know. I don't know what it turned into. Like an action RPG. I'll say it. I think Smite 1 went from a MOBA to an ARPG that people were just so focused on cosmetics. Like, just go play WoW or something if you really value cosmetics so much. I don't know. Anything else to talk about? Um, mm, not necessarily. Oh, yes. Competitive game. I kind of touched on that earlier. Um, for the last couple of years, Smite has been a esport and been competitive, but as everyone would know that's in the scene, the skill ceiling has continuously gotten lower, right? And that can be traced back to things like the Yanis 2 no longer requiring both of the Yanis um, abilities to hit on his 2. So when they meet in the middle, that was like, you get double damage for hitting such a sick ability and then they they got rid of that and they just said just hit the ability and we'll give you a reduced amount um yana salt also was a big health issue although that wasn't really balanced um 9.5 was a big one where they got rid of kill potential essentially at level two it used to be pretty frequent for people to die early and things like that um but yeah the skill ceiling's gone down and with smite 2 i hope the skill ceiling goes back up it used to be a mechanical game where people with good mechanics were just way better than people without mechanics because of like kill pressure and and just you know just the way the game was and i'm not encouraging certain metas i think certain metas like it's just ebb and flow of meta but i'm just saying that if someone is better they should get rewarded a lot more and that comes into a mechanic i heard fino talking about which is um the way that you level up your jungle camps is by invading and um my biggest hate that Pirates have ever done is added invaders curse and when things don't go well they just add something and they pile stuff on top and that's because of ue3 i'm guessing hopefully with ue5 we can see stuff and not just add on this ridiculous bullshit of bloatware to fucking stop someone from doing something invaders curse i hope it's gone um because I don't, oh there's another thing the current smite in smite season 9 10 and now 11 as a player, it is so frustrating, as a new player, that your start is determined by the actions of someone else also. So all these starts where people have to drag red to backs, and then the solo laner, I mean, drag speed to backs as a mid laner, like the solo laner grabs blue, meets you at backs, you clear, if your mid laner gets the wrong ability, or if your solo laner doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, you're both ruined at level one, and it is the most frustrating thing as a new player, I can't imagine how dog shit the start is. Like, it is so bad. I pray that Smite 2 avoids all those things. So if a camp spawns at 0 and waves meet at 30, there's enough time to do both. Like, we don't need to fucking drag everything in and ruin it. Anyway, that's just a little gripe. That's kind of off topic. Smite 2, be competitive, be global, have global servers. Not every country needs their own, but at least hit. 
America, Southeast Asia, Europe. I don't care if you have two. Latin America should probably get one too. Put one server in Brazil. Put NA East on there. Fuck NA West. Get rid of them. They can just play on 100 ping like the rest of the world. EU can have a server. And Southeast Asia can have a server. Right? Four servers, you pretty much capture most of the world outside of India, the Middle East, and Africa. And if you really cared, chuck a server in Abu Dubai or something. Who knows? Um, yeah, that's just a ramble. Whatever. 20 minute ramble. Hopefully it made any sense. I, I don't know.